This video has been brought to you by Learn Flutter Code, the learning platform that cares. So let's get started. Thank you for clicking on this video. And today what I'm going to share with you is the proxy providers. Well, proxy providers themselves has two types in my opinion. The first one is the proxy provider number zero and the others. How can proxy providers have its own different types? Well, I will talk more about it later in this video. And in this video, I will talk on why you should use proxy providers, the difference between the two types, how you are going to use them in multi providers and the other way on creating proxy providers. Ooh, so let's get started. Why you should use proxy providers. In the documentation, it clearly states that you should not create a simple provider if you are passing an object that changes over time. For example, over here, you could see that there is bound to have some changes in a counter app. Providers itself do not get updated, but proxy provider does. This is why proxy provider has an update parameter, which helps update anything in a child widget. I am going to show you that providers don't update and proxy provider does in a very simple app that you might hear of. So I have with me here a very simple counter app. When you press on this button at the bottom right over here, it will increase the counter number as such. However, I made some changes. First thing is I made this number as a separate widget called counter number, which is wrapped with the provider. Then I passed in the counter through the create parameter. And let's look at the counter number widget. If you see the counter number widget, I used the provider to get the latest counter number and passed it in the text widget. And not forgetting, I converted it into a string because the text widget would only allow a string object. And the last thing I want to show you guys is that there is a very simple print statement over here that shows the counter once it has incremented in our debug console. So what do you think will happen if I were to press on the button? So let's see. If I press on this button, click, 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 you could see nothing happens. If I were to go to the debug console, you could see that the numbers get updated over here. So you see one, two, three, four, and five. So how do we then resolve this not updating number? Well, if you have guessed from this video title, we will be using a proxy provider. So inside our provider, the first thing is we need to type in the word proxy and we are going to use this proxy provider zero. The next thing is that we will swap the word create to the word update. So now we have an update parameters. You could see that inside our update parameters, there is two arguments that we need to pass in. The first one is context and the second one is dynamic. So what does this dynamic means? So this dynamic is actually the type that you pass in through the update parameters or method over here. So you can see that it is an integer type. Lastly, let's not forget to indicate our specific type through our proxy provider over here. So since it's an integer, let's type in the word it. Now, this is how you create a simple proxy provider zero using a single type. And if you were to save this, and if I were to press on this newly updated app, do you think it will update? Let's see closely. Press, 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 and it works. So in summary, proxy provider zero builds a value based on external values or objects that changes over time. And this example at the bottom looks very familiar. Am I right? We have implemented in our example counter app. 
So proxy provider will only update its child widget whenever the data is passing changes. So what is then the difference amongst these proxy providers? Like I said earlier in this video, there is a proxy provider zero and the others. Well, if you see in the documentation for proxy provider zero, you could see over here, it is missing a T and the rest has one or more T. What is this T and R? Don't worry, I'm going to explain to you what those letters are. If you were to look into the example of a proxy provider, there is this T and R. So this is just my simple definition of it. So for T, it stands for the data object type that is being listened. While R stands for the result object data type to be passed down in its update parameters. If you were to compare it with the definition of proxy provider zero, it only has an R but no T, which means the T can only take the data from a provider. Well, if you think this is confusing, don't worry because the documentation itself says that proxy provider zero provides or builds a value based on other providers. But from the earlier example that we have, we can build it not from a provider, but external values inside a widget that does not necessarily come from a provider. Therefore, I would say the accurate way to use proxy providers, not the zero, are within a multi-provider. Why do I say a multi-provider, you might ask? Well, in the homepage of the documentation, the proxy provider has been shown to be inserted in a multi-provider, which is a little bit confusing because it's not actually showing inside the actual proxy provider documentation. Well, fret not from all of this confusing thing, I'm going to explain to you what exactly or on how you are going to use this proxy provider. So we have a similar counter app, but this time I've added a proxy provider with a proxy provider zero in a multi provider. Oh my God, there's so many providers. Well, the proxy provider over here is the one that we are familiar with, which we have done earlier. However, the next one, this proxy provider has two types, which is the integer, which is listening to our proxy provider over here and this translation object type. Let's see what this translation object looks like. So in this translation class, we have this private field called underscore value or value and a getter method called title that interpolate the value variable in this huge sentence string. If you don't know what interpolation means, it means to have the variable to be swapped or calculated in its actual value in a string. So if you go back up, we can see that the proxy provider with the translation type is returning a translation object over here. Now let's see what the different arguments represent inside this update proxy provider. The first one is counter. So this counter refers to the provider that we are listening and we are listening from this proxy provider. So that's why this counter is an integer type. The next one is the translation object over here. And this is the object that we are passing down to our counter widget over here. Now let's see what the counter widget is. In our counter widget, we then have a reference of the translation object that has been passed through the provider and it assigns to a final variable called translation. And then we add it into our text widget with the getter method title. Now, if we were to press on this little increment button, what do you think will happen? If you think it gets updated, you're right. So if you were to see this proxy provider over here without a zero, the main purpose, in my opinion, is to manipulate the data with another object to get the wanted results 
you wanted. However, there is another way to create the proxy provider. How? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Inside the documentation of all the proxy providers, there is this example. Well, I'm going to give you a summary. What this means is that you can use the proxy provider zero in order for you to add as many providers as you want inside the function body of the update params. So essentially, a proxy provider two with two providers listening is the same as a proxy provider zero with two providers referenced from the context and using a function to manipulate the data call update and return the result back. So I do have an example of this. In our example app over here, it is another counter app and there is something that we have changed. So the first thing is we have a multi-provider that are passing two providers with two unique objects respectively. The first part is the first part sentence and the second part is the second part sentence. If you were to look at their classes, just click on this. It is actually the same class as or very similar to the translation class. So you are passing in a string value in the objects and to get the value, you have to get a getter method called text. Luckily, that's not called a get. And if you were to go back up, these providers are passing in two parts of a sentence. So the first part you can see is you clicked the button and the second part is times with the space included as well before times and after button and if you were to look at the proxy provider below you could see that in the update section it has its own logic so the first thing is that you get the text from both the first part sentence and the second part sentence from the providers then you add them in the translations argument over here with the first part adding to the counter number which is translated into a string with the second part to get a whole sentence so this whole interpolation or jigamibab 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 boobidibob will be passed into the counter text widget over here now in the counter text widget it will take in the translation object from the provider itself which will present the following statement you click button zero times so let's see if the number increase when i press the button button in uh, she called button and it worked wow that's a lot that's about it in summary, we learned why and when we should use proxy providers, what's the difference between the proxy provider zero and the rest, how to use them in and outside the multi-providers, and finding another way to use the proxy provider. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want more of these providers video, subscribe down below and comment down which provider concept I should explain next. So stay safe and all the best. Bye bye.